Hello. How are you? You all right? <laughs> Sorry. Let's do a serious. A serious video for a change from me. Right. Welcome to the very first XSplit Broadcaster tutorial number one. Now there's a bit of admin to do first of all. That big open space over there. What will happen is I will put in some bullet points as we go. So for those of you that prefer to read instructions rather than listen to instructions, you'll be able to follow it down on that side. Um, if you speak a different language apart from English and you'd like to follow this series, please let me know in the comments which language you speak, because I can also change my subtitles to various different languages to help out. How's that? Is that super? Nah? <laughs> you gets um but yes i'll try my best to help out other other countries as well and we're not going to have this big fancy background for long because i am going to join you because hopefully you've got your own version of xsplit broadcaster whether that's the free version or you've gone straight in there and bought the premiere version i'm going to keep things simple because what i don't want to do is for people with the free version to go i haven't got that button or that doesn't work with this so sorry if it, that if i come across something where you go i can't do that if that's the case let me know in the comments i will do a lot more research on what the differences are between the free version and this version how's that is that fair good right we're going to start off though before we start a brand new show by telling you what you're going to be able to achieve today by the end of this episode you'll be able to record a video with a few fancy add-ons plus some music in a professional manner that's how good this program is and hopefully this episode will last about 15 to 20 minutes let's have a quick look around xsplit as i'm going to call it from now on around the sort of structure of it all so in the top corner we've got files or the file tab which covers normal stuff load save new presentation you've got also a quick launch to your recordings and your screenshot so it takes you directly to the folder where you've just recorded things hopefully the broadcast tab uh, is where you set up your live streams and various different ways to go to live stream. The record tab. Have a look at this on this tiny little settings button. If you can, if it's an option with the free one, change your bit rate to a higher bit rate. It just gives you better quality audio. If yours is at stereo, leave it at stereo. Mine is at mono because I'm going through a podcast machine, which is a mono device. Um, file type for video is your choice. You can have FLV or MP4, but that is about as far as that. All of these we're going to come across as we go through the series, series is anyway, or the episodes. So I'm not going to go in depth. Play out, I'm not even going to look at. Extensions. Some fabulous extensions here, including the Stinger Creator, which we will do on one of the episodes. Um, different tools. Your main settings are here, which will come very useful later on. And the help thing. One of the things I really love about this program is it puts the latest news here. Rather than sending you emails every day, the company puts any information about changes here, which I think is a fabulous idea because you're going to look at it when you're using the program rather than getting annoying emails every single day. So well, well done to XSplit for that. On the right hand side here, we have um, two different workspaces. You've got the classic and the split. Let's have a quick look at the split, but let me just get rid of something first of all right you've got a preview one and a live show so if i was streaming live this is what the viewers would see i can also i can then prep up a secondary scene to get it ready to change scenes to the live does that make sense yeah um for the tutorials i'm going to keep it in classic mode in a single screen mode because that's really how I work as well. Okay, what else have we got in here as well? So we've got resolution. I think with the free one, you've got up to 720 with a watermark. Is that right? Um, with this one, I can go up to 4K resolution. Absolutely amazing. Good stuff. Frame rate, 30 is a normal one I use. 
I've got it at 60 today, but yeah, you'll get used to trial and error and testing different things. Okay, moving down, you've got your main screen, what people will see, whether that's for video or for live. You've got various different scenes, which is next the next episode, including scene transitions and setting up your favorite transitions. You then have um, volume control for microphone and speaker. Cover that. I'll we'll cover that as we go. Uh, this is your workbox. So this is where you will control your show. If you're doing live, you will control it from here. So you can turn things on and off. Like us all. And you can do so much more. You're going to love this. You're going to love this little box and how many different things you can do in here. Okay, so let's have a look at the bottom here. At the bottom, you've got what I would say is your um, activity tabs, your action tabs. The ad source, this is the main meat of this program. So things we can do, we can have smart selection of a screen. So you can draw an area on the screen that you want to show the viewers. You can have a monitor capture. capture. So if you've got two monitors or more, you can show them one of them. Window capture. Depends what you've got open app wise, but you can show them a window. Game capture, I've not used yet. I'm not a gamer. Um, I'll have a go maybe, because I think this is important for gamers. It's a, it's a perf, it's a good software for streamers. So it, the auto detect, I want to personally learn it myself. So we will do one episode where we look at that. Um, devices and webcams. And audio, your audio selection of what, which microphone you want to use. Text, a web page, a website. This one is the main one you're going to find yourself using. This is where you import things like videos, pictures, music, um, scenes. You've got the various scenes over there, which we will cover over there. I'm pointing light over there. Oh, here, sorry. Uh, streams I'm not going to cover because I don't use it and general widget so you can add a plain color a color mat you can have an image slideshow very 1980s um, but you might have cause for it if you're advertising something maybe places you've been on holiday you might want to have an image slideshow Skype I don't think it's on the free version the whiteboard that that is a fabulous one. I think I added that on from the free stuff on the store here. The whiteboard we will show you one on one of the shows. And these are ones I've added on from for free from the app store. Um, I've got live comments for Facebook and I've also got live comments for YouTube. All right, let's make a start. In fact, grab yourself, grab yourself a coffee. I'm going to now have a quick slurp and then we'll get on with making a brand new presentation which you can then join in with hi just a polite reminder please don't forget to subscribe or at least like it means the world to me let's go back to the show okay Let's get started because my, my wife is going to be ringing my mobile in a minute because she'll be on her way home going, oh, we've got weather. Um, bless her. Right. So file. Oops. File. New presentation. I'm not saving this one. Oomph. And this is what you start off with. They will offer you five different template structures, but you don't want to do that. You want to start from scratch. So add a source tomato ketchup i'm going to pick um oops my webcam and it stuck me in the top corner there now you can either drag and drop and move it around by hand or just press Control shift f or command shift f and it will resize it to the screen i'm just going to do some quick setting changes for my own personal reassurance bear with me so I'm right clicking or I can use settings here. And for every file, this little box will open up for different settings. Now, do not be afraid of this. There are so many things on here that are similar with every setting for every file. And you will get so used to this, you'll be doing second nature. 
Um, I'm just going to quickly configure my webcam to something slightly different. I want it 1980 like that. So, so there we go. 61 frames per second call. Uh, HDR, we'll leave it as HDR, sorry. Okay, I'm going to turn off that. Right. Now then, let's just try and do something magical. So I want you to find on your computer any any picture file that you've got. For example, I'm going to use... Right, so any any picture doesn't matter what color it is find a picture file on your computer put it next to you like that and as you can see that doesn't look great does it doesn't doesn't look super professional it looks like johnny age six has made it for his mum to put on the fridge um let me show you so we're going to right click or we're going to go to settings put this here so you can see what we're doing and we're going to go to color and you see at the bottom here, you've got three choices, none, chroma key or color key. I'm going to select color key. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool, press it once with the left click. And you get your little pipette thing there. And I'm going to pick the outside color. Boom. And it's gone. I'm, you can make fine adjustments here as well. Just have a quick look what happens when we do some adjustments. That's cool. Right. To close this box, just click anywhere outside of it. Oh, before you close it, if you've closed it, just go settings and bring it back up again. Yeah. See this one at the bottom. Now, from personal experience, I am going to say to you, every file you put on here, turn that off. Right. The reason I say that, keep source in memory. What that does, it stores your files that you load in the program memory of XSplit. So on your computer, I still up. I don't think it's a cloud. I think it stores it on the computer. So it allows the, the software to grab it quicker when you're switching scenes. Now, what I have found when you're doing a big build, so loads of fancy uh, special effects and add-ons and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, it can slow your CPU down on your computer. And I run a very high spec computer. But it, it's even slowed mine down to the stage where I was like, I was pulling my hair out. Couldn't work out what was going on. Um, if you don't have it ticked, what it does, it grabs the files from your folders where they originate. So off your desktop, for example. As long as you don't move them into a different folder, it will be able to find them. And you'll be just as quick. It really is just as quick to set things up. Does that make sense? Yeah okay right so already then we've gone from a little blocky square image to a nice sort of logo background how about adding some music let's add some music again um, i'm not providing you music files because I, I presume you can you can find music files on your own pc and you've got something you can use to play with Okay, a bit loud, isn't it? So what we're going to do? Settings, correct. First thing, turn off that. And then you've got your volume, your volume tab or your volume slider there. Let's turn this all the way down for now, just so I can talk to you. I'm going to show you quickly now how to loop things. So here you've got an option to play once, play forever, or play a custom amount of time. So I could choose three, four, five times or whatever. I'm going to put it as forever. And when, when it's played to the end, what do I want it to do? I want it just to do nothing. So it's going to just go back to the start and carry on playing anyway. Now, a couple of options you've got. Say, for example, I didn't like the intro. I thought the intro was a bit slow bit boring what you can do is you can choose a start and st 
stop point by using these buttons here. Two seconds. So if I wanted this to start, let's say the exciting bit, the chorus. So I want it to start there. You have to set a, a stop point. So we're, we're saying right, right near the end. You can actually use the very end as well. So we set the end point. Now when it plays in a loop, see it goes back to there. So you've picked your loop, yeah. Um, this button, ninety-nine times out of a hundred, I will select force play on source show. Let me just show you what that does. So if this wasn't playing now. And you see you've got these reveal icons, the eye, the show me icons or whatever, hide, hide, do they call them hide and show? Yeah. If I'm controlling my show, so you're doing a live show, and this, this is your box to control your show, really. Um, and I wanted to start the music. When I reveal it, it starts because I've got that four start thing on. And if I turn that off and try exactly the same thing, Guess what? Nothing. I will then have to go settings play. And that's why I generally leave that on. You can control the on and off using the the hide and the hide and reveal button, yeah. Like so, yeah. Cool. And guess what, guys and girls? That is today's first episode. You have now got your very first logoed show that you can hit record. Hello viewers, welcome to the show. This is your very first YouTube capable video with some sort of fancy logo, some stylish music, and you've done it all yourself. Happy with that. Look forward to the next show. The next show we will be doing scenes and we will be doing transitions. And we will also touch on uh, green screens and how to get rid of backgrounds, moving towards the gaming side of it all. So look forward to that and I'll see you within a couple of days. Keep an eye out, subscribe so you can see when, when the videos are coming out. I will try to get them out at a, at a maximum once a week. I will do them as quicker than that if I have time. How's that for a promise? If you have any questions in the meantime, drop them in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.